Hello everybody. I'm going to do a quick video because I've been asked on Instagram when I posted some photos uh, recently how I scan my negatives and how I've scanned them has changed over time and I've in the end I've looked at things you can buy off eBay there's a Kaiser scanning tablet light thing that you can buy like these LED light sources and I've looked at them and I even ordered uh, a cheap version of of them like a tracing table that you a backlit tracing thing but that didn't work very well it kind of had these weird dots all over it that just didn't work and I've used um, tablets you know like your, your, your smart tablets to, to do that but then you've got the pixels on your tablets that uh, you have to you're kind of battling that so you want to get the depth of field right so the the pixel don't show so in the end, uh, I saw another uh, photographer, YouTuber, um, and he had this great idea and I stole that idea completely because it was such a great idea and went down B&Q, which is in the UK, that's a sort of a do-it-yourself DIY shop where you can buy anything, you know, wood and light fittings and all kinds of stuff. And I went down there and I bought all the bits I needed to make my own kind of for me perfect way of scanning negatives and so i thought i'd just kind of quickly run through how i do it so and this has just made things the quality of the negatives the scans i'm getting is much better and my workflow in terms of how quickly i can scan a roll of film is much quicker it takes me about sort of five minutes and i've developed um, and i've sorry and i've scanned my 36 shots so First thing you'll need if you're going to do something similar to the way I do it is you're going to need uh, and you're not and I've got a flatbed scanner. Um, I've got an uh, what was it an Epson V three seventy, um, but I just found that incredibly slow and that's probably not helped by my computer being really slow. But I wanted a way that I could use my camera to do it, get raw files. I can Wi-Fi them over to my tablet or my mobile. And I can edit the edit the photos there. So I wanted a workflow where I'm using a, a backlight uh, and taking photos of the negatives. So the first thing you'll need is a camera and ideally a macro lens. So what I've got here, just to I'll separate this up so you can see. So this is Fuji XT1, still absolutely fantastic camera in 2019. Uh, I just love this camera, um, especially manual lenses that it's just oh god i won't go on about it it's fantastic if you haven't got an xt1 and you're looking at fuji and you're looking at xt2 xt3 the prices xt1s are going for they just got so much right first time round. so definitely worth getting an xt1 if you're kind of on the fence and thinking about it okay so i've got my xt1 this is a focal reducer that means I can adapt lenses and it kind of retains the focal length, which I've talked about in other videos, but you can use any adapter um, or if you own a Fuji macro lens or you've got a Nikon camera with a Canon camera um, with a macro lens. So what I'm using uh, that works really well for me is this old micro Nikkor 55 millimeter F 2.8. I think they did a 3.5 uh, version of this lens, which would be just as good. And looks like that and then I've got the optional extra Nikon PK13 uh, bit that goes on the back so you attach that and if I'm scanning 120 films a bigger negative I don't use this because I don't need to get that close but when I'm scanning 35 millimeter I use the PK13 and I can get um, really close and fill the sensor of the the Fuji, the fill the frame with the negative, the the shot that I'm trying to take a photo of. So I use this lens. This is a fantastic lens anyway. If you're adapting old Nikon lenses to Fuji, then this is a this is a lens worth getting for your camera anyway, um, or just to use on um, modern like a D a D750 or D, D800 or something. Uh, so that's the lens I use and it's got a really long focus throw so you can nail focus on the negative. So that goes on the camera. That goes on the camera and that's going to be pointing down and taking pictures of the negatives. 
And then, but I and I was doing that for a long time using a Samsung tablet, but uh, I found that it um, it wasn't even really the pixels because I set the depth of field shallow enough that it wouldn't it would pick up uh, it wouldn't pick them up uh, on the negatives. It wouldn't show them in the scans the pixels from the tablet. I'll tell you what it was. It was I found the maximum brightness on my tablet wasn't bright enough. So what you'll find is um, if you've got, sometimes you're developing really old, like if you're using old expired film, or in my case, I got some um, some film that uh, belonged to my granddad and he'd never bothered to develop it. And I kind of got it after he passed away. And so I, it looks like this. There's, you can barely see the, you can barely see the photos. It almost looks like there's nothing on there. So to, for that to, to scan those, you need a much brighter light source. Whereas if you're using like normal, uh, what's this here? Kodak Tri-X, you can actually, you can actually, without me even taking these out, you can, you can see that there's, there's pictures on there. Um, but even with those, sometimes I just thought the tablet, the, the the light source wasn't wasn't quite bright enough. So I wanted something backlit, no pixel, bit brighter. So went down B and Q, and they sell these light panels, and it looks like this, and it comes in a grey box. If I can find a photo of what it looks like in the box, I'll put that up now. And on the back, it's just metal, and this would go in the ceiling. And it's called a, uh, what's this, a Colors 15 Watt LED uh, light panel, basically. And it comes in a kind of gray, gray box. And not expensive. Um, I think it was 12 pounds, which, so the proper Kaiser scanning light tables are a hell of a lot more than that. And this is uniform light, uh, LED across. It's got a really lovely kind of, uh, light to it and it's neutral so there's there's no kind of like um sepia tone around or blue or it's a re it's a very neutral light source which is perfect for scanning negatives uh, and it comes with in the box you get this uh for the lead and then you get uh, this which would be in the ceiling and this goes in like this oops like uh, that and that's now attached and then you get this and then there's nothing here. So what, you, that, what would happen there is that would get wired into the ceiling. So what you have to do is buy some cable so that you can wire it to a plug. And you just, there isn't on in here, there isn't a ground. So it's just two, two, uh, it's your, um, oh God, I can't remember now, but you basically get your cable with just two wires inside instead of three, because there isn't a third to, to like an earth to ground it. So you just get a cable with, you can use a normal cable with, with the three wires inside, but when you get to do the plug, uh, you can do all three as you normally would. When, if you can, basically, if you can wire a plug, you can do this, because you just buy some cable, you buy a plug, you, you connect it into here, uh, inside here is very much like the inside of a plug and you do the plug at the other end now I got a bit of flash and I cut the cable in half I bought this great big long piece of cable to, to do this end this end of, of the panel um, I got a bit of flash I bought a switch as well so I, I cut this in half this cable in half and then I wired either side of the switch which again you just unscrew the back and connect that both sides you trim trim it in and put it in but if you don't know how to wire a plug then I'd get somebody who does to help you with this if you can wire a plug and you've done a few of these then this is as simple as wiring a plug just doing it a couple of times basically wiring in here wiring it either side of the switch and then doing the plug and then you plug it in and it is a lovely bright light source I won't turn it on while I'm doing the video because it'll blind you but um, what I then did, and that worked really well, and I've got, um, I've got from, and you can just pick these up off eBay. These are the trays that go inside flatbed scanners and they work really well. And you can just put your negatives inside and it holds them down 
and you can pick these up a lot cheaper than buying kind of like dedicated negative holders. Just look for ones that um, you, that would go in like an Epson flatbed scanner. This one's for medium format. Goes like that. You see this one. This I've actually just trimmed this one down. It had quite a, a big extra piece here. Um, so between those two, I've got enough to hold down any negatives uh, in place, keep them flat. And then I used that with what I did is I bought. Um, you don't have to do this, but I found this helped. I bought a couple of um, like bathroom panels that you would just stick on the floor. So they're adhesive on this side, and that, that's your that's your kitchen or your bathroom tile basically that you'd stick down. And um, and what I did is I bought I bought a pack which was a couple of quid for a pack that had a couple of tiles in. And I stacked it, I don't know if you can see, but I stacked it two tiles thick. So there's actually two tiles, one on, one on top of the other there, right? And once that was two panels, uh, two tiles thick, I then um, worked out that I wanted that to sit there. And I wanted my other one, my other negative, to sit over here like this. So I used a pencil, drew it all out. And then I've got a sharp knife and I cut out the panels like that. And the idea is that, because this has got a bit of a lip to it, this sits inside here yeah, like that. So light shines through here really bright. Light shines through here really bright. And that sits perfectly inside. I've cut that all to fit and cutting these. These are just quite soft, so you can easily cut these. Uh, with a Stanley knife or something like that. And then what you do is you oops, you put your negative in here and you slide it. And I made these little, I had some spare bits of tile, so I made these little bits here so that it just fits in like that. And then the light shines through there and my negative is in there and that shines through. And then uh, there, those negatives are ready to be scanned. And then if I want to do medium format, I have got one here like this. And then this would go over there like that. And the light shines through there. And the negatives are then backlit. And I can take photos of the negatives and they're scanned. So getting the camera so it's above and ready to focus on these. I use tripods and things like that. And it works OK but it's a bit of a faff. You've got to set it up each time. And I was looking for a better option. And I'll I'll bring it up um, a photo of the one that I got off eBay because I sort of looked around to try and find something decent. But I'll just unplug this so that I've got a bit of space here. But I ordered, ordered the one that just came up um, off eBay. It wasn't very expensive. And I don't know if I can fit this in the video, but it's basically a copy stand. So it looks like this. And you put your camera on there, you put your document there, and it's a copy stand for copying documents and uh, things like that. But what you do is you, I just place this on the copy stand. And now uh, try and get this all in the shot. I'll, I'll do it like this so you can see. Um, so that goes on like that. So I've got my copy stand there. Got my light source here with my tray inside that I've cut out of a floor panel. Shines through like that. And you get a little thing like this and you unscrew it. Like that. And that actually fits your uh, tripod hole on your camera. So you screw that in which I'm trying to do while recording a video. It might be a bit tricky. Um, but that goes in. No, no. I can't see what I'm doing. Oops. There we go. It's a bit better. Right. So that goes in. You turn this around. Da, 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 da. There we go. And you get it to the height that you need it to be at. And you can, with mirrorless, what's great is you can put your live view on and you can manually focus the lens. And uh, basically, 
uh, I'll turn I turn that on and uh, see if I can get this to show you and you you set it all up and you move it around a bit and then you make sure it's all level and you till it's in focus and you've got your you've got your tray in like that got my tray there so that's under there and the negatives go in here and then on the Fuji uh, there's a setting from the quick menu to say that I want it to um, take the photo in a few seconds so I go here and I change that to two seconds so when I click the shutter it counts down it takes a photo of the negative um, the other thing is you can I'll just place this here for a second so there's something to focus on but uh, you can use the you can zoom in like that and uh, just you know very carefully focus in using the lens until you've absolutely nailed focus on it um, I'm just doing this very quickly but you know you take your time and you, you frame up the negative and you make sure it fills the frame and you and you focus and you use the focus assist to jump in and out make sure that you've got it right and then once you've got it right you just put your negatives in and then what I do is the camera stays static and the tray the copy stand stays static and I move I basically just move it across like this and take you know take a photo move it across take a photo move it across take a photo move it across until I've done the strip of film and then I keep going put another strip of film in and keep going and that's that's basically how I'm scanning negatives now and this little copy stand and this light panel you know that's such an easy setup and not that expensive the copy stands what 30 quid light panel was uh, somewhere between 10 and 12 pounds something like that uh, buying a plug and a bit of cable and a switch was another 10 pounds and then that's it I'm done I don't need to mess around with tripods and I don't need to mess around with my tablet which I have to make sure I keep it charged so that it'll last long enough when I'm scanning negatives and uh, and all that business so I've got this nice little setup and I can take this anywhere I can put this on the kitchen table and do it because it's just it's just the camera Let's see if I can show you so it's just the camera the copy stand and my light panel that's all I need so it's pretty straightforward actually and uh, the only thing that would make things even better and I've ordered one off eBay is I've bought a cable release so the XT1 actually doesn't have um, you can really see but the it doesn't have a screw in cable release it's got just a flat black button but on the side is uh, an option and you can put in a cable release there and then I can just sit there and click it and I don't need to do the two second delay uh, and the reason I do the two second delay is because if I just pressed it there might be a little bit of shake from my hand so I'm going to use this uh, cable release um, and the only other thing I'm thinking about I haven't said is I set the ISO to 200 to get a, you know I don't want the ISO to creep up if I'm shooting uh, you know the camera might get a bit carried away so I set that to 200 I set the shutter speed to auto so it'll take however long it needs to take to take a really great photo at ISO 200 and there is an exposure dial here um, but you know on other cameras it's different and depending on the the negative I might adjust the exposure just a little bit if I think it's quite a dark negative and I need to just bump the exposure up but um, but not by much really and that was it so let me know if you're doing something similar and uh, it'd be great if you have been looking at scanning negatives and you want a way to do it if you if you try this method that i'm now using as well where you just go down your local diy shop and buy one of these led light panels because they're they are brilliant and cheap as chips okay like and subscribe and i will make more videos